So we're literally rolling right now. I mean, we're on. We're, we're on. Camera, on right? Yes. yes. Right now. So this is where we start. Okay. Hey. Okay. Camera on me. I'm the. Impl there we go. Hey, Brad from Millspec Monkey. We're here at the 2012 Shot Show, and I'm here with Chris Costa, checking out his new line of weapons he's got here, his signature series. As you know, he's left Magpul and has his own training facility called Costa Lunis. So we're here to talk to Chris to find out all about what's going on for 2012. Well, as far as uh, 2012 goes, as far as training, you know, training's the same as it always been. You know, still targeting military, law enforcement, civilians. You know, it's a very full schedule this year. I think there's uh, almost 31 classes that we're doing. Um, but this year, one of the things that we wanted to do is kind of partner up with some really good reputable companies. And since I do run a lot of different guns and a lot of people are always wondering what I really kind of like and favor, that there are many different weapons out there that are, that are good and reliable as well. Um, it doesn't have to be these. These are the ones that I really kind of, um, just for the quality, overall quality, customer service, accuracy, and what I like to do with the gun, I just felt like these were really, it really worked best and they were really fitting for me to put my, you know, for my name for on. For your signature yeah. on. Yeah. Right. Now, so I was pretty excited. So this, you're telling me this is a signature series with the 500, some zero to 500 are gonna be made? On yeah, this? so <clears throat> give you a little, bit of, a little bit of background. Obviously, LaRue, has the OBRs. Those were the first to come out, both right. in 762 and in 556. What the OBRs have is a 20 MOA rail on a 762. Then they also have a 10 MOA rail on the 556. They have an OBR barrel with an adjustable gas block for run and suppress to unsuppress. Well, a lot of people started making comments saying like, oh, we wish you guys made a lighter gun. So last year they came out with the Predator. The Predator was that lightweight gun, had a lightweight barrel and a more skeletonized uh, upper receiver. And what they did was they got rid of the 20 MOA rail and the 10 MOA rail. So when talking to the great staff over at LaRue, I had asked them, I said, look, I really love for you guys to make me a custom gun, but there's some features that I'd really like to, uh, to have. And it's a lot of features that they already have, uh, that they already do. So what I asked them is if they could trim the rail from a 15 inch Predator rail to a 12 inch rail. Really? Then what I asked them to do was, because accuracy is extremely important, and if you're gonna kinda have one gun, I want it to be able to hit as many markets as I can, so accuracy and the adjustability of the gas block is extremely important for, for running suppressed and unsuppressed. So what they essentially did was take an OBR barrel, throw it in a Predator, and then just trim the rail down. Now it's 14.5. I'm a really big fan of 14.5 configurations. Same here. Um, and in an effort to not have to SBR this gun, they pinned and weld either a Surefire flash right. hider or muzzle brake. Right. Um, so you can totally buy the gun, legal, good to go. Right. Components in the gun, uh, it's running a Geisley trigger. So my, my main focus is I don't care which Geisley you pick, which is your flavor, just any of the Geisleys are really good right. triggers because of just the, the way they build them to stand up for tolerance and abuse. What's the overall so, weight on the gun? Overall weight on a gun, somewhere around uh, seven, seven and a half. It's not too bad. So it's, it's not the lightest gun out there. That no, barrel makes, bad, up, uh, makes right. up the weight, but a good stiff rigid barrel what for accuracy and for suppression is, is really what I'm looking for. One of the other cool features that they did, which was really nice, was this was the first time they've ever dark earthed the gun. Um, if you look at their entire lineup, a couple things. One, I'm really lucky, and I consider myself lucky, that they allowed me to put my name on their gun, because right. um, they've never done that before. Secondly, to code it DE is, is really just kind of a cool feature. So what you have is a nice small package, pretty versatile. And again, you know, it's, it's not for everybody. There's a lot of good guns that are out there, a lot of good gun companies that are out there. But one thing that I do like that LaRue does, and this is, is, is extremely important, my gun comes off the same assembly line as your gun. You know, there can be a rack of 10 guns there, and I don't get one a little more enhanced. They're all enhanced. So no matter which gun I grab, they're all the same. And that's one thing that I like consistently across the board with LaRue products, any of them, right. is that no matter what gun I grab, it's totally good to go. Now, so that's a big deal. As far as having a signature series gun, What's the price point on this, or is it going to be similar to the other guns that we have? I think it's uh, a, a little bit more because they're pin and weld in the uh, Surefire muzzle brake. Mm -hmm. They're swa swapping barrels, DE in the gun. Um, I think they're looking at a price point around 28. 
It's still going to fluctuate just a little bit till after shot. So as you told me that I understand that you're going to have the Costa Loomis logo on the gun to be registered from zero to 500. Then after that, they're going to continue it, but there's going to be you won't have that serial. So Absolutely. The, so the hardcore Costa fans better get there to get within. Yeah, the if you want a, a dedicated serial number, then the first 500, just like you said, Brad, are going to have it. After that, it'll have the logo, but, but it won't numbered. have the. It won't right. be numbered. So interesting. Yeah. Now I saw you got a couple 45s over here. Same thing, signature series. What can you tell me about these? Well, <clears throat> again, it's it's not like we're inventing anything, but <clears throat> what we're doing is combining a lot of good attributes that I like about uh, a variety of 1911s that I've shot over the years. And with the quality and reputation that Nighthawk has, um, we kind of kind of did some cool features. One feature that we did was <clears throat> the slide, and this was probably the biggest for me as far as sighting goes, I've always liked race lines that are on top of the slide that run to the site. And that's nothing new. It's been done for many, many years. Well, I've shot a lot of guns, STI guns, race guns, doesn't matter. And I've seen a lot of the competitive guns where they've angle cut the side of the slide right here. And what that allows, at least in my opinion, is it allows you to see more target at distance. Um, it also drives your eyes right to the site, which I really enjoy as well. Especially for when you get to get on that gun fast, I want my eye to track and have a hard focus quickly on that front sight. So what they did was we combined it, but really kind of combined it more on a combat gun than a typical race gun. One of the great things also is that it runs uh, Bob Marvel's Everlast system. So for those that don't know Bob Marvel, um, he's, a, he's a custom maker, he's been making guns for a long time probably longer than I've been alive, I, I would venture to say. But the recoil system and the spring system that are in these guns are really unique, which aid in, in recoil and longevity. So they're saying change the uh, spring system out every 10,000 now. Every 10,000? Every 10,000 is what you're gonna get out of the guns. Now you still gotta clean it, do all right. the normal right. maintenance, but that's pretty good. One thing that I also like is they undercut really high on the trigger. You cannot get any higher without penetrating metal. Then they extend the checkering up and all the parts are at a one solid block of metal. So between frame, slide, beaver tail, grip safety, everything. So Mag well. is part of your design? Well, I can't really say that this is my design. What right. I can say is or that I'm taking the parts that they have and I'm like, this is what I like. Uh -huh. And then those parts already obviously exist and they throw them into kind of more of what I like or what my tastes are. Uh, so, like I said, I, I didn't invent anything. These things were, were already their standard line, but I'm throwing them into, you know, into a, a gun that uh, is more for carry. The, uh, most of their guns don't have forward cock inserations. I like forward cock inserations so I can press check. Press check. But, you know, just little things that I kind of had them add in for me. And, and that's really all it is. Just, you know, when they said, hey, we'll build a gun for you, I'm like, well, these are all the little things that I just would love to have on a gun, you know. Right. If, so it's, it's kind of like Burger King. If it can be my way, this is the way I would love to get it. Now, right. at the end of the day, my way may not be your way. So what I would advocate is if you don't like this configuration, choose from any of the other configurations that Nighthawk has because you can't beat the quality in parts. All these parts are carved out of one hunk of metal. Right. So as far as reliability and strength on the parts, extremely important uh, when running a 1911. The barrels are cart barrels, so you're getting it's just it's just top quality parts. So who wouldn't want it in their in their own gun? Now is this also going to be a one through five hundred, or is it just going to be? No, we're not going to do a custom serial number on on the 1911s. We also have a, a full size. This one's pretty slick. What can you tell me about this? Do you have anything would to do with the grip system like that? Yeah, I'll talk about the grips. The grips are actually uh, Hilton Yams 10.8. 10.8 Performance does these grips and I really like them. One reason that I like them is the cutout right here. So when you get them released a magazine, this area is already cut out. So if you have small hands, you can really get a good purchase on a magazine release. Um, as far as a full size gun, everybody's different in, is, in far as what they like. <clears throat> I believe if you get a five inch 45, I want the option of putting a light on it. Right. So if, if you're not a big light guy, hey, you know what, don't put one on, but it's there in case you ever do. For me, if I'm running this much gun, I'm gonna put an X300 on it by Surefire, right. something on it to, uh, to work it. The sight radius is longer. 
so you really notice as you're coming up on target, you really notice your eyes drive into the end of that front sight uh, just before you break that shot. It'll run either a fiber or a tritium. Again, selective to you guys because depending upon what people like, some people don't like fibers. My eyes are getting old, and as they get older, it's easier for me to see fiber. Um, John Jardine, for those that don't know John Jardine, Jardine um, is a nephew of Armand Swenson. Armand Swenson started customizing 1911s probably way back in the day, one of the first guys to ever customize 1911s. Typically, uh, what you would see is a matting on the top of his gun along with a revolver sight embedded into the slide, um, which was very, very unique. And those guns are just really amazing guns. So I asked John Jardine if he would allow me to run his rear sight, which he calls a tactical hook. And on it, you can really see how much of a purchase you can get for wow. one-handed manipulation. It nice. looks and it would appear as if it is a adjustable sight, but it is a fixed sight that's in a Bomar cut, which means that the strength of this sight from what, <clears throat> from what I've seen and from what he's told me is, uh, is even better than a normal fixed sight. So I was really happy that he, uh, he allowed us to put uh, this sight on my gun. So that was really kind of a, kind of a cool yeah, feature, slick, yeah. kind of a cool feature as well. All the same features, um, all the same parts, magwell, high cut under the trigger guard. So nothing, nothing now too what's, crazy. What's the price point on these? I think the price point on these are 3,400. 3,400 on both weapons? On both guns, yeah. 3,400, okay. and, and, and here's the deal on 1911s. I have had, and I'm sure you do as well, I've had Colts, Kimbers, Springfields. I have gone through a slew of 1911s, probably, probably over 15 1911s to the, easily, just right. easily, easily. Right. And there's always like little things that I like about each and I've even taken them and gotten them custom, right. you know, had a custom guy work on them. And mainly what I find in many cases is I buy that thousand dollar gun or, you know, a $1,200 gun, I have somebody wrench on it. Well, that's right. over another thousand dollars. I have them switch there. out all the parts that are in that gun because they're generally low quality parts that will eventually break. Right. So by the time I'm done, I've got a pretty, probably a little bit under 3000, but a pretty pricey right. gun. I started buying custom 1911s a long time ago, even before you know Nighthawk was around. And what I always found was I was always wanting all the bells and whistles, all the features. And once right. you start adding in all those features, yeah, it's an expensive gun. Absolutely. And I can, for all the things that I like in a 1911, I don't think I can find a 1911 that's gonna be near $3,500 with all the parts based on the quality in that gun right. uh, as I can for, for Nighthawk which is really, really important. Now, at the end of the day, I still shoot M&Ps. I still shoot Glocks. So, I mean, if it's, it's like don't sell your, your Glocks and your M&Ps and get rid of them and go buy the Signature Series gun. That's a dumbass thing to do. You know, I still run those other guns because they're still good guns. However, when I want to pull, you know, that race car out once in a right, while, right, that's exactly. what I really like about that 1911. It's very unique. And if I'm going to run it, I want to run it in a very specific manner. So right. they've done a great job capturing all of that. No, they're beautiful. They yeah, beautiful. Now we got one other thing we got to talk about. Well, you got to let me kind of explain it, I guess, I, a little bit before. You, you can pull it out, it. whatever. I'm going to pull it out, but you got to explain it. All right, this I'll thing, explain it. Okay. The Chris Costa action figure. Yeah, what, so. What is uh, up with this? So a couple years ago, uh, logging onto the internet, somebody kind of put something together that kind of looked like me, and and uh, you know it was, it was a nice thing to do. I think and said, I saw. I yeah, think I saw it, it right. wasn't bad. It was just, hey, this is kind of looks like the Chris Costa action figure. Um, obviously, it wasn't. It, it wasn't supported by uh, by me, but it was just you know there's a different fan base out there, which you know um, sometimes gets a little overboard. Nevertheless, um, Black Ops Toys is a um, sells basically limited edition figures, action figures. Right. And Caltech basically creates these action figures and then Black Ops sells them. Well, what was kind of interesting is they normally do it on like Navy SEALs, Army Rangers, right. 160th SOAR guys, right. like really like good, good real people, you know? And, and when you think about the military and you think about it, who, who wouldn't you want to like, like build that around as far as a military guy goes, Correct. especially what the great things that those guys do. Right. And what they do is they do a little soldier story. And 
they give them a few figures and they do it and they do a limited edition. So they called, uh, they called me up and they said, hey, look, we're interested in doing a trainer. And uh, at first I thought it was one of my buddies calling me up and just kind of pulling my leg. And <laughs> they were like, no, we're serious about doing it. And it'll be a limited edition, it'll be a trainer. So there's gonna be no misrepresentation. And uh, are you interested? And I guess my uh, first thought, since I'm a kid at heart, was uh, thinking about my kids and how cool it would be, one, because I never grew, I you're a little bit older than me, not much. Well, me. I'm just saying, a little bit. Me. I grew up on a small small GI Joes, but I, I know you grew up, giant, yeah, you yeah, grew yeah, up yeah, on yeah. a big one. And Barbies too. And, well, I mean, Bobbies story. are hard. You know, well, Let's get real, I mean, like nowadays, it's good that your son's playing with a Barbie doll. Vice a Ken doll. <laughs> 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 Cut. Beep. Anyhow, holy shit, he just moved. That freaked me out. All right, I can't wait for the nuclear chip to be put in him so he can come alive. But uh, nevertheless, what they uh, what they said was, hey, it's going to be very authentic. Meaning, don't be sending us photos of when you were 16 or when you were in how, your 20s. I mean, how authentic is it? Um, he's anatomically correct. That's what I'm looking. So yeah. All right. Yeah. I was thinking about some different attachments that were more for the X-rated so market. So it has a built-in kickstand. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Ex excellent, excellent. What's uh, what's crazy is, I mean, the face. The is, face I mean, is, is really. They really it, captured your face. They yeah, they even job. have the uh, scar that's on my forehead from when I was a kid. Um, the jacket, the detail. They, the first thing they said was, "Look, it's." It's, it's got to be believable, so you got to take current photos. Don't send us old photos of yourself. Second, you know, it's, it's got to be everything that you're doing and wearing now. So what's crazy is the, the pants and that jacket, I have that exact same jacket that I wear on a regular basis. It's an Arteryx uh, Helios hoodie. The inside fabric is the same as my jacket. As jacket. I sent in the clothes and, I mean, mm -hmm. everything from the Arteryx logo yeah. on the back to, you know, the uh, um, Arteryx logo on the pocket of these Raider yeah, pants. It's pretty crazy. It's just amazing, the yeah, detail, the Oakleys. I, um, you know, Oakley had sent some of their uh, LSA boots and I sent it to them. And I mean, yeah, these are LSA multi-cam. I'm like, are you serious? I mean, this, the amount of detail is, is just gonna amazing. Get, I'm gonna get one. I gotta it's, get um, one. Whether I use it to stick pins and needles in for like a voodoo doll. I know, I'm really a little worried about that. That could happen. I'm probably more worried about what people are gonna do with it. <laughs> See, I think about just myself, which is my kids. You know, like one day my kids actually get old and they're like, that's really cool, you know, dad was an action figure, you know? Yeah, that's dad's really it. ripped off the body. Yeah, so you're like, like, I hate you, ah! Oh! <laughs> and I'm just like, that's it, you killed me. I but, think it's uh, really cool. I'm, it's just I'm different. Seriously, that's, been, that's an honor to have someone actually want to build a figure after, you know what I mean? You know, there's nothing egotistical about it. No, I consider no, I myself very, very lucky. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I don't, uh, it, it's, it's literally laughable ridiculous is the way I look at it. I, I just. But, and on the other hand, it's cool. Yeah. You know, I, well, I, what I tell some people is like, what if somebody came up to you one day and, and asked you like, hey, would you want this? And I mean, I mean, if maybe, maybe if you don't have children, it wouldn't. It happens all the time. Yeah, I, I, know. I just, I'm so busy. You I, probably already have a few. Well, I, that are bobbleheads, so they're bobbleheads. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. But uh, anyhow, so it's just something neat and unique, and that's really it. I think it's great. I think right. it's, it's bizarre. So, so what do we got going for the next couple of years? Just some straight training? We could be doing videos? What's going on? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, Magpul Dynamics and Magpul Industries did a great job with, with the video series. You know, everything from carbine to handgun to shotgun. And a lot of people have asked me if I'm going to go do videos. A couple things to answer that because it's kind of really important, I guess, maybe the perspective. Originally, the goal was, and a lot of people don't know this kind of backstory, originally the goal was to do a one on one video. Um, show one on one, you teaching carbine or you teaching handgun, something to that extreme. And that was the one thing I generally, you know, no offense to those who've done them, I don't, I don't mean to disrespect anybody, but for me, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I did not want to be on camera that long um, explaining stuff and I just, I wanted it to be a little bit bigger than, than just me, you know right. what I mean? Right, right. So we came up with the concept of, you know what would be really cool is if you filmed the class. So the concept wasn't tested yet because nobody had done it. So when we realized we could do it, we set out and it was just, I, I felt like we created something cool, which was you see us, um, do a demonstration, and then you see the students. 
And I feel like the camera's that student at home and you're going on a journey with right. the entire class, which I really like. Um, and I feel that the overall production quality from Legion Productions and the influence of us at Magpul Dynamics and Magpul Industries, I feel like we're not the best, but we did a good job trying to make the best video that we could. Right. Um, oh, those were excellent. You so great job. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's everybody's like, oh, good job, Chris. Good job. It's just, dude. There's so many other people that make that happen. It's not me. Oh, I'm yeah, just like good, one of many moving gears. Right, yeah. Right. Right. But um, the part you played, you did very well. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a small part. Small well, part. I, you know. I watch it over and over, so. I don't know who watches it over and over. <laughs> so long story short, the, um, a, a, lot of the, a lot of people are asking, hey, are you, guys, are you gonna go do a, a, a video? And my feedback now is, one, with the quality of the Magpul videos, and the fact that I don't really, for me, wanna be in a one-on-one -on -one video, mm -hmm. I don't think that's the direction that I wanna go. However, I do enjoy media. Um, right. And for those that know me, this is, when I put a gun in my hands and I got to do a demo for all those that have come out to a class, you know that's a one moment in time I take myself serious. Right. When I'm teaching, I take myself serious. Aside from that, you know, I just get a sick sense of humor, you know, like a, right. um, like a far side sense of humor or more of a Saturday Night Live. That's what I'd rather do, you know? Hey, do you, I mean, do you see it in the future, maybe two, three years down the road? Because I think there's going to be a college for video. People are going to want, you know, some training. I mean, do you think it's something that you're just... Maybe not now, but maybe two or three years down the road when you've got other people to, to help you out with instructors and things like that. You know, hopefully I don't eat my words. You know, you never know. Hopefully I don't. But I think what I really want to focus more on is a wider audience. You know, stuff like trying to work on, you know, projects with either Discovery Channel or History Channel okay. or any type of uh, feature film projects that I can either choreograph shootout scenes or, you know, participate in. Um, that's kind of where my interests lie. I feel like, you know, um, the DVD segment of my life and YouTube videos are right. hopefully kind of more on, on the way out and hopefully there's other opportunities that I can do. Right. So at least that's what my focus is. Whether that becomes a reality or not, you know, is, yeah, is two I mean, different things. Yeah, you're gonna things. continue to teach because... Absolutely, I always okay. love teaching. So there's always gonna be teaching no matter what project you're working on, you're gonna work teaching in somewhere along the way. I would always do that, absolutely. Okay, and and one of the things is, is the, I, I definitely thank all those out there that, that come to the class. What a lot of people don't realize is, you know, people spend a lot of money to come to these classes. And the money that the students end up, you know, paying me isn't even as much as the hotel fee, the ammo fees for right. God's sakes, the travel fees. and. The biggest Liability, thing, though, insurance, I mean, it just all adds up, you know? Well, the, you figure the average student travels now to come to one of, call it, my classes. This, the $650 they spend for three days of just paying me, it isn't just that. I don't look at it as that student just showed up and cut me a check for $650. I look at it as that student just came to class and just stroked a check for $2,200. Right. Because they flew in, they got a rental car, they're shooting, they're ammo which ultimately means, especially with, <clears throat> it's just everybody that comes to class, there's such an investment that if you're not just coming in and just you're completely like blown away, I haven't done my job. And the reason is, is that their family's not going on a vacation. You know, right. their family's not getting something because they decided to, that it was very, very important to come to a Costa Ludus class to get firearms training. And you know, I, I definitely take that very serious to heart because I know for me, you know, with this economy, I don't have $2,200 to just go off and, right. you know, try to do something that I feel is important that I really want to do. I just don't have the money to go do it. Right. So yeah. I, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of investment on the student side and I really appreciate that. And, and not only that, but, you know, it's people are there to shoot. I mean, our round counts in the courses are uh, lately with squared away students that are safe. You know, there's a minimum of 1,500 rounds, but we're finding, I'm finding most of the time we're at like 2,000. So that's a lot of money that students are paying at the end Absolutely. of the day. Absolutely. Well, can you tell me about your website? I noticed your website's up. You've got products for sale, shirts, patches, other things. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, patches will be coming here real soon. Hats will be coming here real soon. Um, we're selling shirts now. Um, Carrie Davis over at Dark Angel Medical. Uh, we're also trying to help Carrie sell one of his medical kits because I saw uh, the nice kit. Yeah, nice it's, kit. it's a great kit. It's very user-friendly, very small, very compact. Yeah. 
it's it's not a paramedic kit. No. Um, it's, right. it's so if you're like an EMT or paramedic and you right. want other ninjified stuff in there, awesome. That's not the kit for you. Right. It is a very specific, lightweight, mission specific yeah. kit. Yeah, and kit. Um, you know, I've worked with Kerry when I was at Magpul Dynamics, when he was at Magpul Dynamics, and he's starting a company on his own too. And you know, starting your company's very difficult. You know, you don't factor in all the crazy fees and you know, uh, trademarking and everything else associated with that. So I'm just trying to help him out and, and gain exposure to his kit because I believe that you know, if you had this thing in the door of your car or if something bad happened or if you're a SWAT officer, a military guy, and you got shot, when you rip open this kit, the only shit that's in there is the shit you need. Exactly. That is it. it. There's that's nothing, nothing you else. Need. You know, if you want something else, that's great. Right. It's not this kit. Go buy, go buy something else. So. so if we go to your website, we can find out all the products you're selling, all the classes, where to go, cost, everything's on there. Absolutely. Now it's costalunis.com? It's uh, costalutis, uh, www.costalutis, which Ludus. is L-U-D-U-S. Dot com. Now in Latin, that means what for people that don't know? Yeah, it means training in Latin. And a lot of people kind of ask, you know, where did I kind of come up with everything? Um, Andrew Bewiedemann, which a lot of people right. know of. Excellent um, artist. Yeah, amazing artist. Uh, his brother, uh, Ben Bewiedemann, does all the Bewiedemann nice. blades and right. just they're just so violent and just so awesome looking, but so practical as well. Um, him and I started working together and he came up with that logo and based on my maritime background and my family's background, right. it just, um, it was a really good mix. So uh, I kind of explained it a little bit on the website for those that, that maybe don't get it, um, right. just to give a little bit more detail. But yeah, you know what you find? You find that in the moments of need, you know, people are right, your, your friends definitely come out. And uh, you know, everybody that's involved syndicate wise and those companies that I've you know already mentioned, they've just really helped out tremendous. So, well, it's been awesome, dude. I'm I'm, I'm glad we got to talk to you. I'm, I'm glad you're back and up and running and training, and look forward to doing some training with you, brother. Thanks, Brad. It's I appreciate it. You, it's bro. good to see the uh, you too, man. It's good to see the monkey. Now you guys get a lot of stuff. We're that doing well. You guys are well. constantly working on patches and just We're everything. We're doing well. We're here to help you and everybody we can. And so anything yeah, for we those can that do don't you, know, I mean, this is where uh, if you want to know where I get my stuff from, it's from the monkey. You know, it's from Millspec Appreciate Monkey, it. and uh, it. it's a big deal. You know, I mean, it's uh, you think it's easy to just take the the, the data and just convert <laughs> it into a pouch, no. and that's what you originally think. Like, hey, it's easy to make a patch, no. but I wish you know, was. there's a lot of hours that go into it. So I really appreciate you guys helping me out as yeah, well. So absolutely, thank you. Absolutely, absolutely, it's been a pleasure. So, all right, we're gonna see you out the next time in train when you're in San Jose. Yep, I'll Excellent. see you in a few weeks. Awesome, thanks, Chris. See Appreciate you, it.